Facial injuries are scary. A fall, a punch, a road accident and suddenly someone has a fractured jaw. The immediate fear is, do I need a surgery? But here's what most people don't know. Not every jaw fracture needs to go under the knife, especially when we are talking about the condylar fractures, one of the most common and most misunderstood types of jaw fractures. Hi, I'm Dr. Vikram Singh, oral and maxillofacial surgeon and today I want to explain what a condylar fracture is, when it really needs surgery and when it doesn't. Let's begin with a quick understanding of the jaw joint, medically called the temporomandibular joint, TMJ. This joint connects the lower jaw or mandible to the base of the skull. The uppermost part of the mandible which forms part of this joint is called the condyle. So a condylar fracture means there's a break or crack in this upper part of the jaw close to the joint. Condylar fractures are common in children, young adults and especially in road traffic accidents or falls. Sometimes symptoms may include pain while opening the mouth, jaw deviation to one of the side, difficulty in chewing, restricted mouth opening and sometimes a noticeable change in the bite. Here's the most important thing to understand. The condyle is a very special part of the jaw. Unlike long bones in the body, it has a remarkable capacity to remodel and heal on its own, especially in younger individuals. Individuals. That's why in many cases, condylar fractures can be managed non-surgically through what we call conservative treatment. This may include advising a patient for a soft diet, painkillers and anti-inflammatories, physiotherapy to regain mouth opening, in some cases intermaxillary fixation which means temporarily holding the upper and lower jaws together using elastics or wires. But that doesn't mean every fracture can be ignored. The decision between the surgery and conservative management depends on three critical factors. First, displacement. Has the condylar fragment moved too far from its original position? Second, function. Is the patient able to open their mouth properly and chew without deviation or difficulty? Third, age. Children and adolescents tend to heal better conservatively, whereas in adults with severe displacement, surgery may be the appropriate option. Surgery is considered when the fracture is severely displaced, dislocated outside the joint capsule or when conservative treatment fails. The surgical option is called open reduction and internal fixation, where we make a precise incision, reposition the fractured condylar segment and fix it using a mini plate or screws. But this is a delicate procedure because the condyle lies very close to the facial nerve which controls the expressions. That's why the surgeon must have precise anatomical knowledge, surgical experience and use a well planned approach to avoid nerve injury and ensure functional recovery. Now let's clear up a very common misconception. Every fracture needs a plate and a screw. That's not true. In condylar fractures, overtreatment can sometimes do more harm than good. The art of managing jaw fractures lies in knowing when not to operate. And that's where an oral and maxillofacial surgeon comes in. We evaluate not just the x-rays or CT scans, but also the function age, bite alignment, and joint health. Sometimes, the best treatment is watchful observation, guided healing, and structured rehabilitation. There's a famous quote in surgery, a good surgeon knows how to operate, a better one knows when to operate, but the best one knows when not to. So if you or someone you know has suffered a jaw injury, don't panic, don't rush into surgery, get it properly assessed. In many cases, especially with condylar fractures, patients, proper guidance, and time are more powerful than the scalpel. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful or have questions about jaw fractures or facial injuries, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Subscribe for more content.